Hello everyone, welcome to process control tutorial for chemical engineering undergraduate program Universitas Gajah Mada. In this tutorial, I am going to explain about dynamic simulation of continuously stirring reactor using state space modeling. After this tutorial, students should be able to develop and run dynamic simulation of a reaction in a CSDR using state space model in Simulink. This tutorial consists of several parts. Today, we are going to arrange and linearize CSDR equation and then create state space model and then run open loop and closed loop simulation. For closed loop, there are two types of simulation. They are disturbing detection case and servo mechanism case. This is the problem we are going to solve. The elementary liquid reaction is carried out in a GSDR as seen below. Here, A and B react to form C. The red law is RA equal to 3 times CA times the square of CB. With the given data here, we are going to run the dynamic simulation of this reaction using state space modeling theory in Simulink. This is the first part of our tutorial. So for mass balance, we will get three differential equation here. And then we make some linearization. So before this, make sure that we have defined input and output variables. In this case, the input variables are CA in and CB in and the output variables are CA, CB, and CC. To get the linear form of this equation, we use Taylor series equation, or we can also use shortcut method by taking the derivative of the equation with respect to input and output variables. For example, we take the derivative of P with respect to CA in, CA, and CB. So we get the linear form of its equations. And now we are going to generate the state space model of our problem. Here, A is the coefficient of our output variables. This, 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 and this. And B is the coefficient of our input variables. And Y is actually our output variables. After this, we can generate block diagram in Simulink. Welcome to Simulink. This is the block diagram for open loop simulation. If we take a different look, we know that state space model allow us to simplify the diagram rather than the transfer function model. Look, this diagram consists of just three parts. The input variables, the output variables, and the state space model here. For the input, input part, we can use this source and we choose step. For the state space block, it can be found in this continuous section. Uh, this is the set state space block and for the the output blocks we can find in the sync section here we can choose to workspace to export our results to matlab and we can use scope to 
show the results here in Simulink. Now we are going to set up the state space block. Double click the state space block and then fill in the parameter value in this window. We can fill in the parameters here with number or we can also save it in MATLAB. We define the parameter in MATLAB and then we can import the value by fill in the name of the value in MATLAB here. In this case, this parameter is filled with A, B, C, and D. Those are already defined in MATLAB. Like this. So we write in MATLAB what is A, B, C, and D. So we can just call the variable like this. It is easy, isn't it? Next, we are going to introduce step change to one of our input variable. For this tutorial, let's try to give step step increase to CA in as follow. Double click CA in block and then fill the blank side here. At five seconds the CA in value should become 0 0.5 and then click OK. Now we can run the open loop simulation by clicking this button. Yes, here. We can also run the simulating using MATLAB editor. The code that should we use is sim as in here the sim sim and then mention the name of our symboling file and to extract our results of symboling simulation we can use get this is the results for open loop simulation. The results show that the step increase of CA in will cause the decrease of another reactant, CB. The more B will be reacted as the concentration A of A in the inlet increase, and this leads to the increase of C as a product of the reaction. Like this. The concentration of its component are then will be at steady state condition again uh, after time. Now we are going to prepare the closed loop simulation. In the closed loop simulation, it is, it is very important for us to initially define what is the controlled variable CV, manipulated variable MV, and disturbance. And then we need to give a little bit modification in our diagram. So for from open loop system, we, the manipulated variable can be deleted this and then is replaced 
with PID controller here like this and also we add set point block here this is this block for our control variable so how does it works the error of our control variable is the deviation of set point and the calculated results here are then being processed by PID control PID controller and the manipulated value are sent are being sent to the system again and now we are going to set the PID controller block block this we can fill the P I and D value for this tutorial I define the value of P and I in the MATLAB so I fill this plain column with P in and I in the value of P and I is a uh, I'm sorry, the value of P and I are being written in this MATLAB editor. So, from this MATLAB, we can import to our simulink. After the PID control broke already set up, we can run this closed loop simulation and yes this is the results for closed loop simulation for disturbance rejection case the results show that the profile of our control variable in this case is cc with the presence of disturbance we can see that the system will remain CC to be constant by manipulating the inlet concentration of B as the manipulated variable of our system here and the value of manipulated CB is actually come from the response of our PID controller and please note that the profile is determined by the value of our PID parameter so you can try the other value of P and I or D to get a maybe better results now we are going to run servo mechanism we only we need to in this servo mechanism simulation we need to reset disturbance rejection of our disturbance rejection case to zero so the disturbance in this case CA in can be reset to zero and we make a change in our set point block in this tutorial set point has step increase 0 0.2 at 5 seconds like this and then we can run the simulation this is the results for 
servo mechanism simulation. We can see that the results show the profile of CV and MV in the simulation. We can see that at 5 seconds, while the set point is changed, MV, in this case CV in, has fluctuated as the response of PID controller in order to achieve the our desired value of new our desired value of CV like this so at 10 seconds the system can achieve its steady state condition again so from this tutorial we can reflect how step increase in open loop simulation can affect the overall profile of its component and in the closed loop simulation we can reflect how the PID controller play role to make changes in our dynamic system that's all from me I realize maybe you will find errors in this first tutorial video but I hope you can still catch up with the important point of our tutorial today and big thanks for you for having me here good luck stay humble and healthy guys